Hello, everybody. My name is Alejandro Ojos. I'm a tech evangelist with Intel. And today and the Intel Creator Challenge, we also have Marcus Kennedy. Hey, thanks for having us. Uh, really excited. I, uh, Marcus Kennedy, I lead the Creator Gaming and Esports segment here at uh, Intel Corporation. That's awesome. Thanks for being here with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having us. So, so give, us, give us a couple of, of insight about these processors. Yeah, I mean, uh, the first thing to know, I, this is our 13th generation processor, uh, Intel Core processors. This is that next generation of hybrid processors. And because of that, it allows us to provide much faster speeds, more consistent gameplay. Um, that hybrid architecture allows us the opportunity to uh, really game while you're doing other things. Uh, if you want to create, if you want to stream, all those kinds of things, hybrid lets you do that and this new generation lets you do it even even better. These are have the fastest cores we've ever put out for client processors. I mean the, the top end processor, our i9 13900K, uh, will come out of the box at 5.8 gigahertz, making it the fastest gaming processor in the world. That's, that's right. Great. That's crazy. Um, that's right. Uh, we also added uh, way more cache um, because we know cache actually does a really good job of uh, having a better gaming experience. Sweet. And then, you know, I mentioned earlier about that simultaneous gaming while streaming or recording or anything that else that you're trying to do. Uh, that adds to that gaming experience too. Uh, if you're playing a game and you want to record and you want to stream at the same time, the, the cache, the frequencies, and the extra cores are definitely the way to go and they'll yeah, get you covered. Th that's right. So we did a couple of things, right? So uh, we, we have two, the hybrid architecture comes with two kinds of cores. One's mm -hmm. called performance cores or P cores. One's called efficiency cores or, or E cores. Um, the performance cores, we have eight uh, in these, just like we did with last generation, right. but they're just better. Uh, and, they're, and they're tweaked a little bit. Like I mentioned, they're faster because it's, uh, it's just a more mature process now. Um, but for the E cores, we actually added more E cores uh, into it as well, right? And so for our i9, uh, like you see here, instead of uh, having eight efficiency cores, we've doubled that. And we have 16 efficient cores now. So we, we've added more cores, right? But not only that, uh, you, I, I mentioned earlier that we had you know, more cache, right. and so we increased our cache in both the P cores and the E cores. Wow. And so for the P cores that are really used for things like uh, your heavy lifting like games, gotcha. we almost doubled the memory cache, which allows for just better gaming uh, for those P cores to stay focused on gaming. Uh, for the E cores, uh, we, we added another eight uh, gig, gigabytes, or megabytes, sorry, um, going from 30 to 36 uh, megabytes. And so what that does is for multi-threaded applications, for things right. like, you know, Adobe uh, applications or for games that even want to use more threads, that provides more opportunity for them to be used for those applications, giving us far more boost on uh, on the performance for multi-threaded too. So what about the overall performance? What performance have you seen? What numbers have you seen there coming? Yeah, so this? so uh, for the i9 again, like we were just talking about, all of those all of those additions that we got, really uh, we've topped it out at 15% single threaded nice. uh, improvement and 41% on multi-threaded. And that, that's really because we've added those efficiency cores like I talked about, and so that's why you see so much more gain on multi-threaded, which you'll see play out in uh, like creator applications. Yeah. One other thing, you, you mentioned that we'll see you know, uh, different numbers kind of as you go further down the stack. One thing that we did with our unlocked processors here is for the first time ever, we actually added efficiency cores to that i5 yes. case. So all the way down the stack to i5. So for, for those of you who are trying to game or do multi-usage multi, uh, multi -usage, like you know, gaming while streaming, even if you're on a budget on i5, if you're going to buy an i5K, you'll I'll also have access to those efficient yeah. scores too. I think if you ask me, the i5K is kind of the sweet spot. I mean, everybody yeah. wants to drive the Ferrari. I would like to drive the Ferrari, but no. I, I, I definitely like to yeah. drive Ferraris. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I think it's pretty cool. Also, so you talk about, well, so you talk about cores. What about the thread count? Yeah, so uh, with, with thread count, where, where, you, where we got to was, uh, uh, so the eight um, performance cores each allow you to do two threads each, so that's 16 threads. Right. The efficiency cores is one thread each, right? So that's 16 plus your 16, right, which gives you 32. Nice. So yeah, so you just wanna, that's a great improvement on that. That's right. So wow. 32 threads. It's, it's awesome. huge, huge improvement. So now we, we got the process. What about the platform, the platform flexibility? Yeah, so one of the things that we like to do uh, is provide as much flexibility to you as the users that we possibly can give, right? And so uh, we plumb these things to allow you to do PCIe Gen 5, right? So if you, if you want the top of the line, if you want to add in your best graphics card or your best storage, whatever, to, to, through PCIe, you can do Gen 5, but it's also plumbed for Gen 4. So 
so you have the ability to do either. Same thing with memory. You have, we've uh, allowed it to have DDR5. If you want to have that access to the best, fastest, most, uh, most incredible memory platform you, you possibly can have on your motherboard, or you can have DDR4 if you want to wait uh, for later to, to upgrade onto DDR5. So you can kind of mix and match however you want, which is actually one of my favorite features. And honestly, is one of the things that these guys over here, I think, in this creator challenge can really understand is uh, we, we like to provide that flexibility for users to do whatever they want. Tell us about, are there any improvements when it comes to the speed on the memory compared to the previous generation? Well, yeah. So uh, when, when you go up to the DDR5s, uh, that memory speed has increased from about 4,800 mega, from 4,800 uh, mega transfers per second uh, to about 5,600 mega transfers per second at the top end. And that's before you start overclocking it. And, you know, I, I also talked about the PCIe Gen 5 uh, and Gen 4 as well. And that, that Gen 5 uh, really comes in, in handy if you're doing creator applications because it gives you that access to, you know, the top end graphics cards as well. No, that, that's great. So what about the, so we have, we are in, in our process, Intel 7, 7, uh, 7 yeah. process. So tell us yeah. a little bit more about that and how has it improved and what is the, what has provided to us in this new generation? Yeah, so, so when we introduced uh, the, our first processor on the Intel 7 node was our 12th generation uh, last, last time around, right? Um, and so now that we've been running it for a little while, what that allows us to do is to really get more mature, really crank up as much performance as we possibly can out of every product that we can get, which is how we're able to get way more faster speeds with these processors than we were in the last generation, even though it's not like a huge architectural change from last generation to this generation. This generation. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, so a couple of things. So we have that new process that also one of the things that we do, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, is we also were able to keep like that same power envelope. That kind of yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's right. So when you when you want to run all of this stuff, it's still within the same power envelope. So the i9Ks, for example, go all the way up to you know stock speeds uh, within the same two, 241 uh, TDP at the top end, and they're rated in spec at 120. Right, uh, and if you want to overclock again, I mean, you might need liquid cooling if you really want to get the most out of it, right? But all of those things are still within the same power envelopes as the last generation as well. So we're getting these much, much faster speeds, much better performance, but within the same power envelope as the last generation. That's great. So you were talking about overclocking, and overclocking is one of our things. Yeah, it is. Uh, we have these great uh, software. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the XTU, so yeah. Extreme Tuning Utility. Tool. Yeah. Uh, what's new when it comes to this generation on that tool? This time we did a couple things. First is we just enhanced the usages. You have more access to profiles, whether that's CPU or memory profiles for uh, overclocking. Um, we simplified the ability to actually overclock through something called the Intel Speed Optimizer. So even if you don't want to go into the XTU, uh, if you're not uh, that experienced with overclocking, with Intel Speed Optimizer, you can literally, in one click, boop, you can gain access to overclocking. For those who do want to dig into the tool, there's way more access. Uh, you have the ability to tune at a core level. You can do way more. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, what we what we're, what we really think is going to happen here, because of all the headroom, because we have this uh, you know better, more mature process, is we see we think that some of those world records are going to start falling. That's great. So so we have talked about all the speeds and feeds and different specs. How, how about we take a look at all the different graphs of performance that we have? Yeah, let's do it. You can see the the first graph here that shows performance for gaming, and uh, with that gaming performance slide, uh, it. it shows really the benefit that uh, of all those improvements that, that we talked about earlier, the speeds, the increased memory, uh, the uh, mature process, uh, the 15% single thread, all of that comes into play uh, on this graph. And what you what you see here is a comparison both between um, our current generation, our top end 13900K processor, and our previous generation 12900K, right? But you also see a comparison against our competitors. And what you can see is across the board versus uh, competitors, you know, uh, flagship product at 5950X, um, we just beat them across the board for the games that we're showing. Um, there is another uh, little dash that you see on this page, though, because uh, there is a, you know, Vcash product that they put out that increased a whole bunch of cash. It was a very limited release, but uh, really great for gaming. And so we wanted to compare ourselves to that, too. And as you can see, though, there are some games that, you know, still do better than our new processor because there are some games that are more sensitive to things like memory yep. cache. Uh, our, our processor wins uh, on way more than uh, than it loses on. How about let's talk about a little bit more when it comes to the content creation. Yeah, so as you as you see here on this content creation graph, uh, kind of similar. We, we talked a little bit about this leap in content creation and the benefits provided by the extra eight uh, efficiency cores. The way that translates into content creation performance is, as you can see on this slide, just across the board, you know, better than last generation, better than competition.
competition. We're, we're just really proud of this product and, and we think that whether you're a gamer, whether you're a content creator, you're going to really enjoy uh, the, the 13th generation. And so we think that this gives you a good mix of, uh, of products to choose from. If you want top of the line, right, then you get the i5 13900K. But as you can see, the, the range going through the i7 and i5 really gives you a good mix uh, and allows you the choice of, of whether you're on a budget, whether you're not, but still gives you a great experience yeah. and a great platform. And across the board, right, it is an improvement uh, uh, against our last generation, both yes. on speeds, on threads, on cores. Uh, no matter which of these you pick, it's, it's one step better than the last gen. Yeah.